Hello and welcome to India Post Live, India's first news conversation web TV. And what we're going to discuss today is, of course, a very frothy topic, uh, especially with the FIFA World Cup on and uh, the sort of weather that we are seeing, the hot summer climbs, is perfect for the sort of thing that we're discussing. And that, of course, is uh, the most widely consumed alcoholic beverage in the world. Yes, we're talking about beer and the prospects of beer in India. We put together this report. Have a look. FIFA World Cup has lit up the faces of pub owners and people alike. Exciting deals are being offered to bring in maximum traffic for football and beer lovers this season. The first thing which you actually try out as a student in a college or anything is beer. Football, you know, it goes well with beer. Having some chill, lovely beers with friends during the World Cup, uh, hoping Brazil wins. What would be better than that? All the best, cheers. Beer it is, boss. Beer is the best. Nothing that beats beer. This has led to an increase in demand for foreign beer brands. It's a lot of fun, it's frothy, it's bubbly. Uh, it's, it's not spirits, it's not something heavy, it's light, it's casual. And I think that's the culture that's really catching on. It's not treated as an alcoholic drink per se, but it's a happy drink for which goes very well with sports. India's beer market was estimated around 200 billion rupees in 2012 and is expected to go up to 430 billion rupees by 2017. International brands like Sam Miller, Stavelot and Ho Garden are now jostling for bar space. The beer industry has been waiting for a big push to see it headed north. Perhaps the World Cup seems to be heading it for a really good time. Well, the taste buds are already doing things to my mouth, but uh, to have, carry forward the conversation, I have Dr. Bhattacharya joining me. Dr. Bhattacharya, of course, is a renowned uh, doctor and uh, he's also a beer enthusiast. And Pradeep Gidwani, the owner of the Pint Room, uh, joins us in the studios. We also have a lot of people joining us on uh, Google Hangout and Skype. Uh, but first, I'll come to you, uh, um, uh, Mr. Gidwani. The sort of weather that we're seeing, coupled with, uh, you know, the World Cup, I mean, uh, it's a sort of a double whammy, if you say, for beer lovers. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I think it's fantastic. I mean, beer has uh, has sort of you know taken the position now as a, as a drink which is pretty much becoming all weather. Yeah, but of course, in summer times, it's uh, it's it sort of increases quite significantly, and then events like FIFA, football, and beer are sort of uh, seen as something which go hand in hand. That's really helping a lot. Yeah, but I think it's fantastic to have this weather. It's fantastic to see uh, you know beer selling such a lot now. It's great. Yeah. Doctor Bhattacharya, I mean, I'm sure you don't subscribe it to your you know patients, but uh on the whole, I mean, you know, we've seen a lot of people when they start out, you know, especially in college and all. The first thing they want to try out is beer because, you know, it's the sort of thing where there's not too much of risk involved, is it? Uh, that's very true. Uh, simply because uh, uh, beer is uh, kind of considered to be a friendly drink. Largely, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it has now started gaining ground in India. Also, the acceptability, social acceptability has started uh, pouring in. And uh, these days, to be very honest, I believe that uh, it is uh, seen somewhere between the hard drinks and soft drinks. So it's, uh, you know, somewhere out there. Also added to the fact that it is considered to be a drink associated with the youth and with uh, sports. Okay. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got people joining us on Google Hangout. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, is, is that uh, that's Sanchet, is that? Sanchet, can yeah. you hear us? Hi. Hi, Sanchet. Uh, welcome to the conversation. Um, what is your take as far as, you know, the beer industry goes and, you know, the youth and the beer factor? Hi, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, probably in last in last four or five years, I've seen a drastic change. Uh, I, I, I'm, I can say I'm, I'm 26 right now. Probably I started drinking at the age of 18. But that time, my, my family and all, you know, they all were after me. I mean, this is too young to start drinking. But I can see, I can see my my young cousins now at the same age of 20 and my family and everybody the, they they are fine i mean the culture is slowly changing it's all it's all because of probably the the modern culture the the imported beers or the the culture is has drastically changed with the time okay so changing times so, uh, but yeah. what about you i mean what's your personal favorite so my favorite is is Hogar and obviously I mean, it's, a, it's okay. one of the best Belgian wheat beer you get in in India. Okay. okay. Uh, Pradeep sir, I mean, uh, 
the advent of foreign brands, you know, uh, that's perhaps, you know, bringing in a lot more people because earlier the established Indian brands perhaps didn't offer that much variety. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's absolutely true. I've sort of uh, been very fortunate to have been uh, part of this growing trend. Yeah, I was sort of uh, involved in the startup of Fosters in India and then uh, and then Carlsberg uh, as a managing director set up uh, the business in India for and launched Carlsberg and Tubog in the country. Yeah. So Fosters was pretty much the first foreign international brand to come into the, into the country. And I saw how that created a uh, created an uh, you know a huge impact uh, within consumers in India. So good quality, good products, and I think we're positioning it clearly as something. It's not about getting drunk, but it's more it's more a social drink, yeah. and that's pretty much what we did with brands like Foster's, Carlsberg, and Tubog. And now that I've turned entrepreneur and uh, and run the Pine Room, and pretty much that's what we're doing in the Pine Room. We're sort of uh, trying to create it as a space. It's more like a coffee shop or beers. It's a place where people can come in and meet up. It's not about getting drunk. It's about having a conversation like this. It's about meeting friends, uh, uh, you know, and having having a few beers here. So what we've really done uh, with the Pine Room is we've got a large variety of beers. And I think for the first time in India, you know, people can try different styles of beers. You can uh, you can try very nice uh, ales. You could try some nice stouts. You can try some uh, uh, some Belgian wheat beer on, on on tap. A lot all of these were not available about three or four years ago. But I'm really pleased to see this growth in, in the last couple of years, particularly the last three, four years, such a big variety of uh, imported beer brands available in the country, and I think that's really good. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, I mean, uh, mm. the point that uh, pra Pradeep is making, the, the sort of variety that we see now, you know, I mean, uh, there was a time about a few years ago when, uh, you know, I was traveling and we were crossing uh, the Gurgaon toll, and then I saw this huge beer cafe coming. I was like, are people ever going to go there? And now, you know, it's all over the place. Very true. Uh, I think what Mr. Gidwani is uh, is emphasizing is uh, uh, it ca it can't be truer than this that uh, uh, the the world of beer has changed in India, and it has changed forever. Secondly, uh, with the options available, today's youth is ready to experiment. He's uh, you are getting all the, the the top brands available at your doorstep or 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 near your neighborhood, and this is what is there. Uh, another thing, the third factor, very important, is the growth of football in urban India. I think that is a major factor because, mind you, soccer is a 90-minute game divided into two halves of 45 minutes. That's exactly the time which an average drinker would take to maybe to consume, uh, say, two bottles of beer wow. with, with, with a wonderful uh, break in between of 15 minutes to try out some snacks and order the next uh, round of beers. So it, as Mr. Gadwani was putting, this is an occasion. Beer gives you that opportunity to kind of interact. It's a, a, it's a social platform where you know friends and uh, relatives and uh, associates and acquaintances, they meet and catch up. Wow, the founders of soccer surely had this science in mind. Uh, we've got, yeah, we've got, uh, uh, that's uh, Chinoy. Uh, hi, Chinoy. Can you hear us, Chinoy Kapoor? Yeah, I can hear you guys. How are you? Hi, Chinoy. Uh, we're good. Uh, welcome to the conversation. So, I mean, how, how are you enjoying your FIFA World Cup games? Thank you. Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. It's sometimes hard to manage with work because you get so sleepy in the night. But <laughs> nevertheless, it's football. So, we're always up for it. And what's the beer scene as far as you're concerned? <laughs> Hi, Chinoy, can you hear us? Yeah, I, yeah, I think he's back. Hi, Chinoy, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so what's the beer scene? I mean, uh, isn't beer helping you stay awake late nights? <laughs> beer gets you all dizzy. <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, it, it's, it's good to have fun with your friends, hanging around in bars. So, you know, it's good, yeah, and I have seen, you know, uh, this, I would like to share this experience that I had, um, like uh, this Argentina match, and we were at, my, me and my friends, we were at Hoskars, okay, so this place was all jam-packed, there was this huge screen, and this place was all jam-packed from, you know, you, you had, you couldn't, if you finished your beer, people were gulping their beer slowly, so, you know, if you finished your beer, you could not, go to the bar and get a new one so <laughs> so that's that's how jam-packed the scene is these days 
Okay, okay. So, uh, I would also like to bring in uh, Sonia Verma who has been patiently waiting. Uh, Sonia, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah I, I can. I hope you can hear me too. Yeah, yeah. I hope you're not, uh, you know, experiencing the jam-packed uh, sort of uh, beer pubs that, you know, uh, Chino is uh, dealing with. Right, correct. I am completely out of it now. I have completed my college days and now in, you know, work life. So, so yeah, quite away from it. Do I miss it? But, yeah. But, I mean, you know, in college, you know, you're normally short of money. Now is the time when you can actually enjoy it. So, you know, why are you staying away from it? I don't get time to do it. I hope uh, maybe when we Super. have time, we'll tend to. Uh, and and mostly, you know, we, we get short on time when, when it comes to spending time for your own. So I think that's the reason maybe we are not able to go and hang out in pubs and, you know, these entertainment are completely out of touch. Okay, so I guess, you know, the FIFA World Cup is the right time for you to get in touch. And in case you're in Delhi, the place to be is the Pine Room. Uh, uh, Mr. Gidwani, I'd like to bring you back. Uh, what, uh, you know, the point that Chinoy is trying to make, there is absolutely no place if you go to a, uh, you know, a bar right now or a pub when, when the match is on. I mean, what is it that's bringing so many people in now? I think um, a couple of things. I think one is, is as Dr. touched upon in, in the very beginning, I think there's a big um, social change that's happening in India. Uh, India now today is is part of the global world and at least amongst uh, educated young people uh, drinking beer is no longer what what it was when you know taboo was a taboo yeah. you know many years ago where drinking <coughs> beer was seen as, uh, as as doing something wrong so I mean today uh, as I said social values have changed so I think one uh, you have uh, younger uh, younger people a lot more India is a young country and uh, and the youth normally uh, normally prefer beer Third, we've also got women who are now becoming more and more, uh, 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 more and more easy about drinking beer. Fourth, you've got a whole host of international brands uh, uh, that have come in, and it's pretty much uh, it's, it's pretty much the way of the world. Yeah. If you actually look around uh, Western Europe, uh, or you look at uh, or, you, or you look at it in a world community like the U.S., about 70% of all alcohol consumption is beer. Yeah. And it's 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 only a country like India because it's been so heavily taxed and prohibited, and you've got country liquor that you've got beer at such a small percentage of the overall alcohol pie and you have strong beer and you have mild beer and you know all these differences here yeah. all across the world beer is a social drink it's uh, you, you say you drink it with your father you drink it at age of, age of 16 and you drink it with your friends as you grow up and it's pretty much informal and casual and i think that's pretty much what's now happening to india we're seeing a lot of integration take place largely because of the web and internet and the way the world is being so a lot of people are integrating fifa is another big connector uh, soccer has grown, as again Dr. mentioned. So that's that's been a big connector around the world, and uh, beer is quite nicely associated with uh, with football. Yeah. So I think all these connectors put together are actually making making beer quite exciting. Yeah. Well, Doctor, uh, we, we saw Sonia say that you know she doesn't have time and she doesn't go. But the you know you're talking about uh, the social change. I mean, th there is a lot of peer pressure also. I mean, at, at that age when you know you may not want to go and have a drink, but your whole team, your whole team says, "Come on, let's go and have a beer." So, you know, I mean, that sort of culture also perhaps is no, no longer taboo, as I said. Uh, very true, uh, very very true. Because uh, see, uh, it's uh, uh, beer is one drink too. It's uh, as as I said, it's uh, you know, it's uh, beer is being seen these days as somewhere in between a hard drink and a, and a soft drink. Yeah. The the great placement uh, and thanks to sports. For example, what Victoria Bitter did to the cricket in Australia, and before that, of course, Foster's did. Similarly, Heineken, by placing itself as one of the main sponsors in UFI things, and, uh, and UFI is big in urban India with the urban youth. So it has also uh, breached a major, major uh, a, a, a social barrier. That is, it has been able to connect with uh, the urban uh, the urban aspiring women force, the, 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 the women professionals. And, and, and they are the ones, uh, these days, they have got initiated to the world of soccer. And with the soccer comes beer, because be beer is all over the place. Whether it's the Everton sponsored by Chang Beer for a long period of time, or as I said, Heineken with UEFA. So uh, uh, the peer pressure that you're speaking, I mean, where, where a woman uh, uh, professional may find her male colleagues discussing about the standings of English Premier League or the UEFA, and every time she opens up uh, her, uh, her t television set and she finds the things being most of the clubs being sponsored by these beer majors. So she has, uh, you know, that sort of an association builds, and she would try to experiment this. And, and why not when so many options are available? 
And right from mild beer to the strong ones to lager to pale ale to ale, I mean, uh, I guess the uh, you are spoiled of, for choices. I guess the days of bending like Beckham are over now. You don't have to bend it like him. We've, we've got, uh, you know. Uh, it's blend it like Beckham now. Blend it like Beckham. Oh, that's a good one. We've got Sanchet back. Uh, Sanchet, uh, uh, your thoughts, I mean, uh, as far as, uh, you know, if you go out with friends, like they're saying, uh, beer is something between a soft drink and a hard drink. So, you know, what, what would they normally prefer to have? Uh, it's always beer. It's always beer. I mean, uh, till, since the time I've, I've tasted all those nice bullet beers, I've stopped taking al uh, hard alcohol because, you, you know, I mean, hard alcohol has a lot of, Probably uh, it's not that. You'll overdo it. Last. You're scared. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's nothing, nothing like that. But yeah. uh, it's it's quite refreshing as compared to other beers. Though uh, I mean, you you feel you especially with sports, beer goes really well. Okay. And uh, just sports, or you know, even the hot weather. Maybe tomorrow if you have a. It's really sunny and you know you have nothing to do. What are the two things you would like to do? Uh, so probably... So it's a Friday. I'll, I'll, I'll stay at home with a nice beer. <laughs> watch, watch some sports, that's it. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I'll bring in Chinoy again. Uh, Chinoy, if you can hear yeah. us. Yeah. You know, uh, how would you describe the mix of a FIFA World Cup with this, you know, summer? And the beer. I think it's the perfect cocktail. It's the perfect <laughs> cocktail. It blends in perfectly. And trust me, you know, uh, beer being, as uh, one of the gentlemen in the studio said, that beer being one of the drinks between the soft drink and the hard drink. So obviously, everybody is going to prefer beers because we are there to have a good time, not to get wasted. Okay, yeah. so we are here, and uh, each and everyone in the youth, everybody in the pubs, or be it in the restro bars, everybody is there to watch the match, not to sleep in the match. So, <laughs> yeah, probably beers, and it's a perfect cocktail for us. Trust me. Okay, okay. We, we uh, sound like two beer freaks here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there's a third one with us, Sonia, who you know who seems to have given up for some reason that she perhaps knows best. But uh, Sonia, I mean. Uh, if, if, if you were to go out to watch a uh, you know, FIFA World Cup match, perhaps, you know, uh, could that turn the tables on you? Mm, uh, definitely. I mean, if I have time and I want to go out and, you know, sit around, watch a match with my friends and, and have fun, I would definitely have a drink in my hand. And looking at the, you know, uh, the scenario around with the, you know, two freaks out here, I'm sure I'll have a hand, uh, I'll have a beer in my hand too. Okay. I believe, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Chennai, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt, okay? But I believe that, you know, it has become a social cliche these days that everybody having a beer in their hand or if, if somebody's talking, you know. I was there at this Indian jazz festival and I saw that, you know, each and every person had a smoke in their hand. I mean, it's become a social cliche these days. You just got to have it. I mean, no offense to Sonia, but, you know, uh, okay, I think you just gotta have it. Okay, um, I feel that. Yeah, so uh, uh, Mr. Gidwani, coming coming to the business aspect of it, I mean, uh, where do you see the beer market heading from now on? I mean, has FIFA provided the right platform, or it, the time was already there for you know beer to come into the market in such a big way? I think the time was uh, was was already there, as mentioned. That uh, I mean, we talked about the. Uh, changing social values in India. We talked about internet playing a big role. And we also touched upon uh, the hot weather over here. I think India is a country which is uh, at most times of the year fairly hot and conducive for beer. Uh, India's also got, uh, uh, in most regions, we have fairly hot food and, uh, and, and beer goes really well with it. I've been associated with this industry for over 25 years and, 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 and seen the way it is. But, you know, unfortunately in this, in this country, beer should actually be a, be a larger chunk of the alcoholic beverages pie. But because of the way it's so heavily taxed and so heavily controlled uh, by, by various state governments, and that's the biggest challenge for this industry. Yeah. As I said, in all, of the parts of the, in all of the parts of the developed world or, or the educated world, beer, is, beer accounts for about 70% of most alcohol sales in most developed economies. Yeah. And it's only in countries like India where it's less than 30%. Yeah. 
And so I think clearly a long way to go. I think it's, it's a great opportunity. I think what's happening is on one side, you've got all the drivers in place, which is changing social values. You've got, as I said, hot climate and younger population and the integration into the world. And on the other side, you've got the complexities and very heavily, uh, very heavily taxed there. India, for a country with, um, uh, with a per capita parity income of 4,000 US dollars, an average bottle, uh, a price of a bottle of beer is one dollar. And if you were to look at that versus Europe, which is about 40,000 US dollars, uh, a price of a bottle of beer is 50 cents yeah, in, in, in retail. Wow. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, that's, and so if you look at a bottle of beer, a bottle of Coke or a bottle of water is exactly the same price yeah. if, if, you, if you were to sort of, you know, go, go to a kiosk in Europe. Yeah. And that's pretty much what you would, uh, uh, you, would, uh, you would see. And that's the reason why you've got such high per capita consumptions. Yeah, yeah so I mean, uh, that's a point. So you're mean, actually missing out Czech Republic. Czech Republic yes, is that's a, that's a yeah, 156 liters per true. capita per that's annum, a, that's the uh, which is the largest. Then you've got second is Germany, and then third is Ireland. Yeah. Uh, Okay. So three fairly fairly large companies, but you look at China. I mean, I mean, yeah. you know, com country of uh, comparable size. You look at it, yeah, per capita consumption, thirty seven, and India is at two. Yeah. Two point six. Yeah, with, with a similar size population, and that's a joke. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, is that, uh, the point that uh, Mr. Gidwani is making, uh, we also have cartels in India. I mean, there, I'm sure there are a lot of people who would not want the beer industry to grow at the speed yeah. that it should. Yeah. I mean. Somewhere down the line, politics always comes into everything, doesn't it? Uh, very true. Uh, and uh, I believe, uh, see, there may be a resistance uh, at certain levels happening. Uh, India inherited, in recent times, it in inherited a lot of uh, British uh, values. Some of us would like to call them Victorian values. So that was largely, uh, when it comes to drinks, it was about uh, uh, Whiskey being whiskey. The, uh, uh, the the biggest uh, chunk in that pie, and uh, which is quite surprising because uh, for a country like ours, with the sort of tropical climate that we have got, and also the, our food habits, as Mr. Gidwani rightly pointed out, uh, the amount of spices and amount of uh, the, the masalas that we consume, uh, whiskey uh, doesn't actually gel well, but somehow uh, uh, this was the norm of the day. And it was largely seen as a kind of a status statement because of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the highest echelons uh, in the Indian establishment, M maybe the civil services or the defense forces also patronized uh, um, uh, the, the whiskey or, uh, you know, such other, drink uh, it back was back. kind of a thing which is now changing, ch maybe changing slowly at that level. But what, uh, what has actually been the catalyst of change here was the youth power, which you know no one anticipated, and the way youth has taken to beer, and um, for various reasons as we stated before, uh, has kind of you know has been the game changer. And uh, I can tell you from a very close angle because uh, I have been uh, uh, a visitor and uh, 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 somebody who has been associated with uh, the clubs and uh, various other establishments, both in defense and in civil uh, services. Uh, the change is happening surely. Maybe it is happening slowly, but it is surely it is happening. At least with the newer generation of officers, with the newer generation of bureaucrats, and and, and newer generation of technocrats, they are uh, the change is there. Change okay. is there. Slow but sure. Slow but surely. Okay, we'll uh, go back to uh, Sanchet. Uh, Sanchet, we are about to wrap up our conversation. Your last comments, as far as you know, uh, beer and soccer is concerned. Uh, uh, actually. It I've already spoken a lot about a lot about beers. I'm actually <laughs> sounding like a big beer freak here, but <laughs> uh, again, uh, I would just tell people that it's it's the best best drink you can have with any sport, especially with soccer. Uh, as as Doctor rightly mentioned, in 90 minutes, you can you can easily gulp two to three beers, enjoy your drink, enjoy your beer, enjoy your match, drive back home safe. Have fun with your friends. That's yeah, it. Cheers. Yeah, that's that's the main thing to drive back home safe. So you know, uh, what would you prefer, going out with friends and having a beer, or someone like me who no, prefers so to stay at home and you know, wherever 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 we go out uh, with friends, we always we always you know take one sober friend who won't take <laughs> drink with us, who will drive us back to our okay. home and drop us back. We always make sure we have something like that, or otherwise we take a cab. <laughs> Okay, so, so that's that's smart drinking. That's so, smart <laughs> drinking. Okay, thanks so much, Sanjeev, for joining us. I'll I'll bring in uh, Sonia back uh, into our conversation. Sonia, your last comments. I mean, 
has this conversation so far managed to, you know, perhaps put you on the fence and then your friends can push you to the other side? Uh, sure, sure. This really reminds me that I need to get out and, you know, join my friends and watch soccer maybe somewhere. So definitely, yeah, this is the best uh, match you can have uh, wherein you, there is soccer happening and there is beer. And I, I will really agree uh, to Mr. Gidwani and, uh, you know, all your guests out here that uh, the generation has really changed. And uh, since, you know, the business corporates involve a lot of youth, uh, the mode of expressing and conversation has completely led to a different, uh, you know, uh, mode altogether. So they definitely want to have a drink in the hand which is not that high and keeps you, you know, to the core and you have a discussion and a nice interaction. So, uh, obviously, this gets me out of uh, the walls, the four walls, and I will definitely tend to want to go out and have a good time with my friends and watch soccer, maybe. Okay, high, but not so high to get that I high. I would just say one thing yeah. to Sonia. Sonia, beer with us. And we promise that your bearings will be intact. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Dr. Matajare, final words. Uh, final words uh, simply this that historically beer has been recorded as the oldest drink uh, in the human civilization. That was recorded in the uh, beer jars which were found in the ancient Babylonian civilization in the city called Ur. Uh, so across the world, beer in local culture has always been part of uh, the human history, uh, right from Far East to uh, the Middle East, uh, to Europe, uh, to the um, uh, uh, Incas and the Aztecs uh, in, in Americas. So beer is nothing new. It is just that uh, for, for a time in between, uh, the drink lost its fizz. Uh, and we are very happy to find the fizz is back. And let's say cheers to beer. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Gidwani, uh, your take. I mean, where do you see the industry heading in the next two years? Well, I mean, I think the um, the only way it can go is uh, is up from such a small base as we saw. I mean, two liters per capita is a is is a joke for a country like ours. I mean, I at least hope that it gets to the levels uh, uh, where it is in China, and uh, it gets a bit more freer. And I think you have more and more, and it's really really good for for the country. It's 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 really good for the social aspects of the country where you have more people drinking. Uh, alcohol forms with lower alcohol content rather than drinking country liquor, rather than drinking hard spirits, beer is pretty much uh, uh, easier. So I'd really hope that happens and I'd like India to be a fairly large beer drinking nation. Yeah. So I really look forward to that. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Okay, so cheers to that. Thanks so much, uh, Dr. Bhattacharya and Pradeep Gidwani for joining us. And uh, Sanchet and uh, uh, Sonia, thanks so much for joining us on this conversation. So there you have it from all the beer lovers that uh, the only way to go forward, the only way to go is to go forward because uh, that's where we're headed. The, the, right now, the consumption is very low. But what we're saying is that we're not trying to promote too much of alcohol for you. But if, you're, if you are there to drink, please drink responsibly. And one of the drinks that you can have, of course, is beer because it's neither that hard nor that, uh, you know, less hard so that you, you can have a striking balance between the two. So thanks so much for watching. You can also join in our conversations by logging on to our site, indiapostlive.com. And if you want to send us your feedback, we are also there on Twitter. Our handle is at the rate India Post Live. Thanks so much for watching this conversation. Many more conversations will continue on India Post Live.